Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So the question has been put, hello Cap, can you show in DCS whether you can split the needles in the helicopters or not? I've tried it in my Huey but I can't get it to work. So we need to understand what splitting the needles in a helicopter means. So let's just jump in our first chopper, let's jump in a Huey. I just chose this one because it's my favourite helicopter. So what we've got here is the RPM gauge for the rotor so how fast the rotor is spinning there that's the inner, need, inner needle and we've got the outer needle here this is the rpm of the engine and the two are linked they're linked by a clutched system not dissimilar to a clutch system in a car and so during normal operation the rotor rpm is linked obviously it's geared down through a gearbox but it's it's directly linked to the rpm of the engine so if the engine is running at whatever that is, nearly 7,000 RPM, then the rotor is running about 3,500 RPM or 350 RPM, whatever that is, it doesn't actually say. And one of the tests that a real helicopter pilot does before they take off is to do a splitting needle test. And that is to turn the throttle, so turn the RPM of the engine down suddenly, at which point the helicopter should realize that the engine is throttling down, but it does not want to drag the rotor down with it so what it should do then is declutch the engine sever the link from the engine to the rotor blade so that the rotor blades can spin freely and the engine is free to throttle down without dragging the rotors with them and this is if you like a representation of what could happen up in the sky if your engine suddenly fails you don't want the coupling between the engine and the rotor anymore you want the rotors to be able to freely spin without the drag of the dead engine so that you can make an auto rotation landing and this should all all be done automatically in all or most helicopters as far as i'm aware so in this test all we're going to do is stay in the ground here we're going to keep collective zero so we've got as less drag on the rotors as possible so they can spin as freely as possible and we can turn the throttle up and down so if you look on the controls up here and this should be the same in all of the helicopters we drive today that's the collective that's the pitch of the rotor blades this here is the throttle of the engine and you've got your cycle and your rudder so the first thing i'm going to do is cut the throttle and what i should see ideally is a splitting of the needles so this large needle here should rev down as the engine revs down because i've cut the fuel to the engine uh, uh, at least by a certain amount because i've cut the throttle down but the rotors the small blade here should stay spinning at least to an extent and it should drop down much lower than the engine rpm needle and this is splitting the needles and this is like i said a test to do to make sure it works when we're in the air so i'm going to throttle down and what we can see is that there is no splitting of the needles the two are still coupled the engine is dragging the rotors down with it so the clutch has not engaged or disengaged whichever way around it is there still is a physical link between the rotor and the engine now as we understand it that is not not modeled correctly in this DCS Huey I'm always happy to be corrected but as far as we understand the basic idea of choppers is they should not be connected once we throttle down okay so I'm going to turn the engine back up and they'll still be connected For the next test, uh, what we can say is maybe for some reason it's just not modelled on the ground. So why don't we get airborne and go and have a look at what this uh, does in the air. So we're going to have to start using collective now. We're going to have to start putting resistance on those rotor blades and turning the pitch up on the rotor blades. We'll get some forward momentum just for a bit of extra safety. Okay, that should do for now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to throttle down. As soon as I throttle down, I'm going to cut my resistance on my rotors by turning the collective down. And what we should definitely see then is a splitting of the needles because we, what we don't want is a connection a physical connection between the engine and the rotors when we throttle down so throttling down now our resistance coming off now oh careful and you can see that it's not working they are what's happening now is although the throttle is down i'm diving forward and i'm getting kinetic energy back into the rotors so the rotors are spinning because our trade in potential to kinetic energy by us diving and it's dragging the engine back up even though the throttle is down to zero we're dragging the engine rpm back up with the rotors because there is a connection now, as far as we understand this is not correct uh, correctly modeled what i'm going to just add the resistance back onto the rotors and throttle up to get back into normal flight 
Put them up. Collective up. Okay. So that's that. So now we're going to show the only way that we can actually spit the needles in the QE. I'm just going to get a little bit of height here. I'll probably crash because I'm a bit out of practice, but I'll just show the basic idea. So what we're going to do now is cut the fuel tip engine completely. So an extreme version of turning the throttle down. We're going to turn the engine off completely. And we should see that we should be able to split the needles now. So engine off with the fuel cup. Resistance off the rotors with the collective off. The engine will power down completely now. The clutch is going to engage or disengage now. And now we've got the spitting of the needles. So we've got the engine RPM dying now. We've got the, the, the clutch has done its thing. We've now lost the coupling between the engine and the rotors. And the rotors here, can now I can now control them with my air, air resistance, i.e. my collective. And we've got a full split now, so it has done its job now. But as far as we understand, it should do that just if you turn the throttle down. So it's just something to bear in mind. Right, so I've got to get some... Dear, this isn't going to work very well. Uh, collective on. <laughs> Can't know where to land. <laughs> i got nowhere to land. Oh, this is going to hurt. Ah. Uh. Anyway, so that shows how the only way, as far as I'm aware, uh, that we can split the needles in a Huey. I've looked through the control list and I can't find any clutch, any manual clutching um, uh, controls or anything like that. So let's jump into a MI8 now, which is going to be modelled differently. Okay, we're in our MI8 now. Let me put my controls up there. And this is going to be modelled differently. So um, we're going to split the needles here, but they're actually two separate gauges. It's a little bit annoying, but still okay. Got the RPM here, it's got needles one and needles two because I've got two engines obviously and we've got one rotor and that is the rotor RPM. So um, I have got three stages of, um, of throttle. I've got top, middle and off or lowest. So let's go up to top and let's just let it uh, uh, spool up the engine. And we can already see we've got a disconnection between the rotor here and the engine as we are more pretty much expecting. So what I'm going to do now, we're static here at an RPM of 85, 86% here. I'm going to spool down the engines with the throttle and what we should see is a split in the needles, at least until the inertia disappears from the main rotor. So, throttle cut, and you can see there a definite split in the needles. And the, these, uh, the rotor will slowly power down now uh, because it's been the coupling has been lost, the clutch is engaged, the coupling has been lost and energy retention of the rotors is going down now and now it's lost its energy okay so in the mi8 you can spit the needles just by using the throttle um and for fun so i don't really need to show any more of that that's just it works perfectly as it should do in this aeroplane uh, but i might as well show an auto rotation because why not it's fun let's get this powerhouse up, up in the air shall we okay that's enough so i'm going to turn the throttle down now i'm going to split the needles uh throttle off i'm going to come off the collective loosen up the road to resistance let the RPM increase, add a little dive in, don't really have to, but I will. Put RPMs on, adding resistance to the rotor. We've got a complete spit in the needles here, rotors at full RPM. Engine, we've not turned it off, we've not fuel cut it, we've just decreased it with the throttle. Engine RPM is down to 70, so it's idling now. Uh, so we've got a, a lovely split here. And for the lulls, why don't we go down and practice an auto rotation? Which I'm going to do wrong because I'm going to run out of runway. Bad cut. I have to go down here instead. Oh, resistance! Oh, my rotors have fallen off! This is why you should never do these things live. Oh, it's not going to end well. Thump knocker. Right, that's that. Let's try the next plane. Okay, we're in the Huey now. Now, as far as my understanding goes in the Huey, we don't actually have a throttle per se. Instead, we have a fuel cut. Uh, this fuel lever here so maximum fuel at the moment which is kind of maximum throttle and you can take the throttle down like that now that's my understanding i stand it to be corrected but i think that's how it works in the huey uh, we've got our gauge down here so we've got our turbine our engine here in thousands of rpm we're currently at you know 4400 rpm sorry about the shaking i can't stop it uh, we've got the rotor RPM in here in 100, so they're, uh, they're currently linked and that's at about 400 rpm so if i were to turn down the uh, uh, the fuel feed, the, the this effective throttle. We can see that we do get a split with uh, no collective or no resistance in the rotor. 
then we get a split as the engine dies down and um, there's a decoupling of the engine and the rotor and the rotor here will slowly lose energy now and follow the fuel cut down or the throttle down. Up again. And look, you can see the uh, time it takes the rotors to get spooled up compared to the engine. Whoops. Oh dear, I appear to have broken something. New helicopter, nothing happened. Uh, so let's try again. It's fuel cut. And you can see the rotors following it down. Let's see if it lets us increase this time. It will. Okay, and why don't we do uh, uh, an ultra rotation for fun? I'm sure I can screw this one up as well. So that's a good splitting the needles test in the Huey. Oh my god, this is unusual. There we go. I'm not a fan of the uh, Huey. Uh, so I'm not. A, why do I keep saying Huey? I'm not a fan of the Gazelle. Uh, lovely chopper, but it doesn't feel right to me. Something about it just doesn't feel right. That. Uh, then again, I am usually wrong. So, okay. So, we're going to spit the needles completely now by pulling right back. Collective off. Spit those needles. Look at them split. Beautiful. Uh, I actually have to do something here to stop this crashing. So, excuse me a second. I'm not going to get the rotors back. I haven't got enough altitude. I'm not going to get them back. Not in time. Let's try it. Full collective. Oh, no. This is going to hurt. Ah, thump! Well, that was extreme splitting of the needles in the gazelle. Let's go and try the last one. Okay, we're in the KF50 now. Let's uh, re-familiarise ourselves. So that's our rotor RPM there. It's the same percent this time. Um, and you can see our operating areas there. 8,000 to... Sorry, 80% to 90 something percent. And here are our two turbines here in percent again. So what we want to see is a split between these here and these here as we get a decoupling so get ready for throttle cut and you see a definite splitting of the needles there rotors powering down and we throttle up again okay that was pretty easy to see and because everyone wants to see me fail all the time let's go and do a uh, silly auto rotation uh, showing a splitting of the needles. I forget how easy this thing is to fly. Look at it. So stable. I've never actually done an auto rotation in uh, an attack helicopter before, so this should be interesting. So what I'm going to do is... I don't know where the fuel cut is, so I'm just going to throttle down. And we'll split those needles as best we can. So... Throttle down to zero. Collective off. Resistance off. Little forward motion now. We're going to... Oh, she's stalling. Uh, okay. And you can see now... I've um, got the RPM uh, of the rotors heading up, dangerously high by the looks of things, and the uh, uh, we're down to idle on the engine. So I've just got to add resistance to the rotors now as not to overspeed them. On, there we go. And now we've just got to keep the rotor speed between 80 and 100%, which is easier said than done. All while the engine is idling, I think we're going to be okay. And we're going to look for somewhere to land. Maybe this back garden looks good. Oh, this is really easy to rotate. Must be a lot of inertia in those blades. And it has a twin blade uh, plane as well. So I wonder if that has something to do with it. It's definitely easy to water rotate. that but I'm probably going to crash in a minute so. right running out of altitude running out of energy in the blades here that spot looks good radar warning going off or something going off okay going down collective up transfer some of that energy Ow! Perfect GR landing. 
Right, so that is showing that there is order, there is splitting of the needles in all three aircraft apart from the Huey. The Huey will only do it when you do a full fuel cut. Um, nothing else to add to that. Hope you enjoy that. Go and split some friggin' needles and we'll see you later.